Imagine walking in on a crime scene. You find a bathtub on the balcony, filled with compost soil and sand. A body hidden underneath the dark material that is normally used to start life. Sounds like something that only happens in movies, right? Or perhaps, in Japan. Let us rewind to 2006. A bright-eyed and bushy-tailed Lindsay Hawker, a 22-year-old student, moves to Japan to teach English. The start of an amazing adventure, or the start of a horrific tale which led to a best-selling memoir and a movie. Tatsuya Ichihashi, the murderer behind an innocent woman, a death so horrible that it left the entire Tokyo in shambles. In October 2006, Lindsay arrived in Tokyo, the metropolis which boasted with its amazing nightlife, futuristic technology, and its shrines and temples. She arrived from England after she graduated from the University of Leeds in Coventry. She graduated with a biology degree and planned to do her master's as well, but postponed it due to her dream to teach English in Japan. Lindsay just wanted to go to Tokyo for a while. She left her boyfriend in England. She kept in contact with him and her family over emails and Skype. When her parents realized that she was quiet for longer than usual, they started to panic, rightfully so. Lindsay shared an apartment with two other female students. She was safe, she was having fun, and she was changing lives by transferring knowledge to others. Then came the 28-year-old son of a dentist and medical doctor, and he changed everything forever. One day, when Lindsay was traveling home on the train, the planets aligned in the most awful way possible, and she met Tatsuya Ichihashi. He tried to use the good old-fashioned, I know you from somewhere, pickup line, by telling her that she is his English teacher, who she was not. Apparently, he looked quite normal, even though he chased her all the way to her home while she was cycling. She should have seen the signs and rode that bicycle straight to the nearest police station. But instead, she let him into her home, because he was thirsty from all the chasing he just did. Fortunately, she made sure that her flatmates saw his face as he suspiciously wandered around her home. To be romantic, or I don't know, seem human, Ichihashi drew a picture of Lindsay, and on this piece of paper, he left his signature, number, and email address. She agreed to meet up with him four days later for an English lesson, which was approved by the school she was currently teaching English at. After the lesson, they took a taxi to his apartment, which was just a few kilometers from the cafe they met. Lindsay told the taxi driver to wait for her, but after seven minutes, he decided to leave because she didn't show up. This is where things turned for Lindsay. The next day, the phone rang at the police station. A missing person report is filed for Lindsay Ann Hawker by her employer. When the police arrived at Ichihashi's apartment, they found that Ichihashi fled on foot, thinking that maybe he was just going to the gym, barefoot, with only one bag. But that was not the surprise of the day. They found the body of a 22-year-old beaten and battered, raped and abused, buried in the compost soil and sand, in Ichihashi's bathtub which he dragged out onto his balcony. The police who found her were distraught by the very violent act of such a young man. Her body was battered, she was bound, and the bruises on her body indicated that she had been subjected to a prolonged attack. Egg-sized bruises were inflicted by fists on her head, and marks all over her body typically caused by furniture. Lindsay and Ichihashi were both martial arts practitioners, but Ichihashi held a black belt. Lindsay lost. He raped her and strangled her to death. In his trial hearing, he said he just wanted to keep her quiet. He can't remember that he strangled her. After he fled the first time, he realized that the police were on to him. So he decided to do a little disappearing act and went for plastic surgery by himself. He must have gotten freaked out, seeing as his face was well known because he was a dangerous man out on the street, and posters of him were all over the news. He cut his own lip to make it look thinner, and he removed moles from his face with a knife, 
in a desperate attempt to make his face appear different. He traveled far and wide, lived in a World War II bunker for a time, where he ate fruits, fish, and even snakes. After being on the lam for quite some time, he decided to use money he saved from a job he had to pay for plastic surgery, to completely try to change his face. Unfortunately for him, the lady who worked at reception became suspicious and showed his picture with his new appearance to the police, which was spread wide, and a week later, he was identified by a member of the public, the one and only 28-year-old Jim Obsessed Loner, who came from a rich family. The infamous Tatsuya Ichihashi was arrested, two years after he committed the horrendous crime. At first, when he was arrested, he didn't confess to the murder of Lindsay, but eventually, in court with apparent remorse, he confessed. He said that he raped her immediately after they stepped into his apartment. He confessed this under a breath of sobs, and mentioned that he didn't want to kill her, he just wanted to make her stop crying out. He wrote a letter to Lindsay's parents, wherein he apologized. This letter was published in newspapers far and wide. I am sorry. I am very sorry. I am very sorry. I am very sorry. I not only destroyed her life, but I also changed your lives. What I did to her and you will never be forgiven. After the published letter, he wrote a book confessing to the rape and murder of Lindsay Ann Hawker and telling the story of how he fled for two and a half years and how and why he underwent cosmetic surgery. Lindsay's parents traveled to Tokyo for the trial. They lived any parent's worst nightmare, sitting there, helpless, hearing how their daughter died out of the mouth of her murderer. Every time Ichihashi was brought into court, he gave a deep bow to her parents, a gesture of an apology to them and their family. The family who just lost a young daughter, someone whose life was ended way too early. Her parents looked away every time he bowed. They did not want to see it. They had no intention of forgiving him or accepting the fact that he is remorseful. Her parents demanded that he receive the death penalty. And even though they do sentence people to death by hanging in Tokyo, this is only reserved for serial killers. And the court felt that a 28-year-old man can still turn his life around. He can still do some good. When he started selling his book, Until I Was Arrested, his intention was to pay the royalties to Lindsay's parents, but they said they wanted nothing to do with his book. They just wanted justice for Lindsay. It wasn't long after he published his book that he sold 100,000 copies, which according to sources, he took none of the profit from. Seeing as Lindsay's parents declined his offer, he donated everything to charity. This is not the best thing to write about, but the book is a few pages of inside information into the mind of a killer. I Am Ichihashi, Journal of a Murderer, was released in 2013. A movie of the book written by Ichihashi. Was he remorseful? Was he truly sorry? We will never know or understand what went through his mind on the fateful day when he decided to take an innocent girl's life. What drove him to do this? All we know is that no amount of apology letters, tears, or memoirs by Ichihashi will take away the pain the parents felt when they had to bury their young daughter.